is up guys, Rice Vlogs back with another video. Thanks for clicking on the link and checking things out. Today we are back again with the Corolla hatchback. I got a little piece that I'm going to be installing today. Uh, so I ended up getting the SE for the model of the Corolla hatch. There is also an XSE and of course those that are car enthusiasts know of the GR Corolla that's coming out. So there's going to be all that lineup. But as far as the base model Corollas, there is the SE and the XSE. When you get the SE, you don't, you do not get fog lights. So it's one of those things where, you know, I could have got the XSE, but there were certain things that I did not want. One of them was leather seats. Um, obviously heated seats wouldn't be too bad, but I didn't get that option because I didn't go with the leather seats and the XSE. You don't get the heated seats in the SE. Um, you don't get the wireless charging. Um, you don't get the option of a full black interior, which I wanted. So going with the SE, I got the full black interior like I wanted. Um, other than that, there's um, navigation in the XSE. The SE doesn't have that. I was fine with that because I use my um, phone for any kind of GPS anyways. Um, but everything else, I mean, is pretty similar between the two models. Um, and believe it or not, getting the SE, you actually get a few different um, trim pieces black instead of like a chrome or a silver. So definitely wanted that too as well because usually people delete chrome if they're, um, you know, any type of car enthusiast or just wants like a better finish. Because chrome is kind of outdated, so you kind of delete that, make everything black nowadays. So anyway, getting rid of all that, having the SE is op options that definitely um, something that I would want compared to the XSE. So anyway, there's all that. But of course the XSE comes with fog lights and the SE does not. So I picked up some eBay um, fog lights. It's the entire insert and then plus the fog lights and a whole wiring harness and all that good stuff. The only downside to it is I may have um, a little bit of extra wires going to the battery or something, which obviously it's aftermarket, it's not OEM, it's not, you know, everything's all tucked away nice and wired correctly. Um, to make it real nice and neat. But anyway, I'm doing what I can with what the kit gave me. Um, it still gives me a little factory style button that will go right into um, one of the blank slots on the um, accessory ports, I suppose you could call them, uh, next to like the, um, the dimming knob for the dash and then any kind of like, you know, if you were to have fog lights, they'd be there. Um, the automatic high beams is there. So things like that. This should just replace the button, um, you know, blank. So we should be good there. So it'll be neat inside the cabin. I'm not just going to have like a random switch or button. So that's nice. Um, but in the engine bay, there might be, you know, those extra couple wires that go to the battery or anything like that. On outside of the car, of course, it's going to just look OEM. So anyway, guys, I'm going to quit yapping. We're going to get straight into this. I already have the car jacked up. We got to take that front lip off that I installed in the last video and uh, start you know, taking apart some things and kind of getting everything put together and routed. So let's get straight into it, guys. Alrighty, so as you can see here, this is what the SE comes with. It's just this piece here that is blanked off. And of course, with the aftermarket um, updates here, we just have a identical piece that will replace that. But this one, of course, has the hole for this nice LED um, bulb, actually. This is just a complete LED piece that if this were to burn out or something, this whole piece would just be replaced. It's not like a actual bulb that gets put into a housing. This whole thing is just the LED. So you have this part that's gonna be replaced and you'll have that nice LED bulb inside there. So uh, should be pretty easy as far as this. Um, there is one screw that's usually holding it on the bottom here, which actually um, part of the splitter was held on by that as well. So now it's just a matter of kind of popping out of place and getting this piece out. So I'm going to do that next. And then uh, we're going to kind of look into the wiring harness and how everything's going to be routed. I'll probably start from inside the cabin and work my way out because it's going to be neater, I think, if I bring it this way versus in because any extras then can get left, you know, inside the bumper or inside somewhere. So like I said, guys, this kit comes with wiring harnesses. 
everything you need, two plugs for the lights, all the extra wiring here, and then here's some of those um, connections that'll need to go to the battery or something like I said. We'll look into um, if I can get maybe wiring from an alternate source so I don't have to land it directly to the battery, you know, maybe some kind of a um, switched power type source or something's happened to that so it's a little cleaner, but we'll look into that in a minute here. I'm gonna focus on getting these out and then um, looking inside the cabin and seeing, you know, how I'm gonna get that blank spot out for the actual button that this kit comes with and I'll show you guys that quickly. Um, right here we have the button. So a nice little fog light style click button. So this will go right into the dash. Um, where some of the other buttons are. It's designed just like them. I think it'll light up and everything, so definitely a nice kit. It was only $100, so let's get into it. All right, so this is actually the back side of that little piece that I showed you guys. There's a couple little screws here um, that you can see like up there, here, and there's one kind of down off the camera that you can't see, but anyway, those few screws you're just gonna take out and this piece will pop forward and come right out. Um, once we get to that point, you can see here these are actually the mounting screws for the actual LED. So luckily the bumper of course is kind of universal and allows for that same LED placement. So like I said, this kit is exactly what you need in order for everything to be a direct swap. Um, no like fabricating or anything when it comes to the fitment of everything here. Just like I said, obviously the wiring is going to be a bit harder. So we'll get this piece popped off. I just wanted to show you guys the screws and everything quick and uh, how you get about to getting this piece out and then we'll go from there. All right, so I got those few screws out in the back here and it's just a matter of kind of getting behind here and there's a couple push tabs that you have to kind of get just so you don't kind of damage anything. Um, last thing we want to do is break any of the slots that the piece goes into because then you're going to be dealing with uh, a piece that isn't going to want to sit in there correctly. So very tight. Um, you know, not very easy to get at because of all the extra bumper pieces. You know, if you are really committed to making it maybe a little easier, but doing extra steps, then I would say you could definitely take the whole bumper off, but I don't really want to do all that, so I'm trying to get it without doing that. And one of the tabs, there we go. that now hopefully that'll kind of open things up for me here oh yeah there we go boom got that guy out as you guys can see now I think uh, my best option here is to maybe get that light mounted in there first um, so obviously I'll have to get this up in there, mount it. Um, the box did come with like an L and an R printed on them, as you guys can see. So um, unfortunately though, that doesn't really help me because what's L, what's R, you know, is the passenger side over there gonna, because this is the driver's side, you know, is that gonna be left when you're looking at the car or are you talking when you're sitting in the car, then this would be left. So I'm just gonna have to kind of see um, which one kind of seems to fit in there better. So, yeah, it's good they printed it on there and they're trying to help, but it's really not that helpful if you really kind of think about it because who really knows what side's what now. Um, so we have these mounting or adjustment pieces too on the bottom. Of course, those are going to be your bottom, so you know that much. Um, so then you just kind of have to put it in here and see. You know, I can tell already that this is actually going to be the other side. So I had the correct one originally with this left one, which 
you can tell it fits in there a lot better actually brings it forward all the way other one was kind of pushed back so we have that where we need it now we'll just have to use the screws that they actually supplied in order to get this mounted inside of there so a nice little baggie of screws and we'll just go inside here and get it screwed in quick with the impact and once I get it mounted in there I'll be right back alrighty so we have this bulb now in here and now it's just a matter of dropping in that new trim piece that's going to go right around that. So we need to kind of get this fit in here and then we'll be uh, running screws in the back side of it to get everything tidied up. So let's see how this goes. looking better I don't know if it needs to like click into place exactly <sighs> Let's see I'll look underneath here and see if there's anything fitting better. <sighs> Gotta pop this in place, maybe it'll help. That's better. So right there you guys can see, it does stick out just slightly. If I were to get a screw on the back side there, it's gonna pull it back and just hold it. Um, comparing to the side that I didn't do yet, it's not perfectly flush and flat, so it does kind of overhang a little bit, kind of goofy, but um, yet again, guys, anybody that is into JDM cars like this, they're not built, you know, perfectly. Everything does just kind of click together, you know, kind of cheaply in a sense, so, you know, everything doesn't perfectly line up ever, but nobody will ever notice that unless they know what they're looking for. So, of course, this side, once I get a screw in there, it's just going to kind of help hold it back a little better. Hold everything tight, so we're going to get some screws in there, and then uh, I'll be right back with you guys. Alrighty, so just like that, we now have this piece completely tightened up in here. Everything is back and secured where it was before. The bulb's in there, so this is good to go on this side. Now, underneath here, you can kind of see my hand down here. This is part of the uh, wheel liner. I'm going to leave that disconnected from the um, undercarriage here because I'm gonna have to get back in here when I run any kind of wiring, when I actually wanna plug the bulbs in, cause right now I just have the clip hanging here. So I'll leave that off for now. We'll get back to that um, in a later segment here. So we're gonna go back to the other side now and I'm gonna actually take that one apart and get the bulb all put in. But I'm not gonna show you guys cause you just seen what's here. Um, so you just kinda follow these steps on the other side. It's gonna be the identical piece. Um, one thing I wanna note, because this is eBay, it's not going to be perfect. There is a little section here that is kind of bowed, um, not really tight to the actual um, piece of the bumper here. So one thing I noticed between you know this OEM piece and this aftermarket piece, this plastic is slightly thinner. It seems like a little bit more like flexible, kind of just cheaper feeling in general. It's a little lighter. This piece, of course, is a little more rigid feeling. Um, if you wanted to, of course, you could cut out this section for the bulb, but, you know, if I ever wanted to convert this back to stock or get rid of any kind of, like, aftermarket, you know, holes or anything, or all the wiring in general, then I would want to keep these pieces for that, so I am going to just leave it like this. I'll probably never take them off, but, you know, just in case, I have a spare that's OEM, so I'm going to save these how they are, use the supplied parts for now because, of course, um, I just would prefer to have the OEM piece sitting on the shelf for now, believe it or not. 
just in case something happens to this because I am still kind of doing a lot of trial and error with um, you know front lips, bumper, stuff like that. So if anything happens, I can replace it with a nice new OEM piece and uh, just have to cut it out. So I'll save this piece. I'll use this for now. It's fine. So I'll be right back. Alrighty, so now as you can see, this here is the passenger side. We have the bulb in, this piece in. Um, one thing I want to show you guys though quickly is it was a little bit harder to get underneath and inside of here. So as you can see, underneath here we have the um, washer fluid reservoir. So it's a lot tighter of a compartment here than the other one. So I ended up um, using a screwdriver by hand a little bit and I'll show you my little contraption here. I just threw a quarter inch drive socket and then had a Phillips head right in there so I could get in there at that correct angle. Um, I even used just the tip for a little while inside of here so that way I had that nice uh, short radius and then I could get some really good crank on it to get them off and on. So sometimes you gotta get creative. Um, you can't always just use power tools and stuff. I'm sure those of you that worked on cars before know this but we now have that on there and that one so now you can see how it's looking with the fog lights. Now we just need to run all this wiring. But like I said, I'm going to start inside the cabin and work my way out. So I'll see you guys inside the car. All right, guys. So here's that instrument panel like I was telling you about. So we have the dimming for the dash right here. Um, and then we have the automatic um, high beams. So I already took out one of the blanks. So as you can see, there's all these blanks that are in here, um, tons of room. So I just got a screwdriver behind this and just pulled it as hard as I could and it popped out. Um, and then as you guys can see, here is that button that was supplied. So they're very similar, as you can see, um, the plug versus the actual button. Um, so I'm not gonna pop this in fully yet, but I'll just kind of get it placed in here. Um, it looks like there's even grooves down here at the bottom. See how there's a groove there? So it almost looks like they kind of made that um, fit one way only, which is really nice because it just kind of goes to show that there is some quality in this product. Um, hopefully, oh, and there's even an arrow. Look at that arrow pointing up. So this will eventually slide in here. Um, yeah, just like so. And I'll have to obviously push it all the way in and push it back. It should fit nice and snugly and not, you know, protrude out or anything. But I'll worry about that when the time comes. Um, but for now, we're going to try to get the wires at least ran up here and then back into the engine bay. I have to find somewhere to actually pass through right now. Um, I'm not sure if I want to route it like maybe um, up and over and down through. I'm not sure yet or somewhere underneath. I need to look for an opening or some kind of a rubber hole to make it through or something. But I already took off the kick plate down here. So as you guys can see, we have um, this kick plate that would usually be here across the bottom is now gone. We have the OBD2 just kind of hanging here. And I'm just gonna try to find like an opening up top in here somewhere. Um, hopefully I can find a little pass through area or somewhere where like the a cable or a wire or something is going through already and I'll just kind of sneak through with my wiring as well. Um, it's going to be a little hard to try to get a wire up and through to the actual button but I'm going to try that now too. So um, It's going to be hard to kind of get the camera set up here. This you kind of have to figure out on your own guys. Um, it's just kind of a matter of feel and finding an open spot, kind of an open passageway. So. I'll get back to you guys when I kind of get things routed somewhat here, and then, um, yeah, we'll go from there. Alright guys, so we do have our wire up here now for the switch. So it was kind of a pain in the butt to route it. I did end up taking the side panel off so I could kind of get in here better, um, back behind where the switches are. So you can see, um, I can actually reach down in there now, and uh, you can see I'm pushing and pulling the wire through, so that helped me there. Um, and then I had to find a spot to route through the firewall. So it looks like up in this corner here, you can kind of see I have some of the felt moved out of the way. Um, 
but there's actually, I'm not going to be able to really get you up there to see it, I don't think. Um, but there is a wiring harness up there. Sorry guys, this is awful, but there's a wiring harness up there that, um, you can actually see like outside up there now. Here, I'll move some of this felt out of the way. Alright, it's hard to see, but I got some light shining through there. There is a wiring harness up there um, with a rubber gasket. So, the rubber gasket's here. There's wiring coming through this way and through the firewall into the car here. Um, I just pulled that out and then fished it through the side. And then I'll just push that bushing back into place. I'll show you up here in the engine bay. So here's this little piece of um, heat shielding. It's right to the right of that back here. I'll move this hose out of the way the best I can. And right back there, you can see right there at the tip of my finger, there's some wiring back there. There's like a whole harness that runs through. Um, it's really hard to see here, guys, but here's the cable that I ran. I went right over these um, brake lines here and then through, you can see the rubber gasket there now. So I had to fish it through there to get it into the car. And then here's all the rest of my wiring here that I can tuck behind the battery and route directly to the battery. Alright guys, so easiest part of this whole thing is probably this right here and that's plugging in this wire into the button. And then we just shove this button into here. Just like that guys. So like I said, nice thing with this kit is it is kind of OEM like how you have these buttons. These all like click in and out but they don't hold position which is perfect because that's how this is too. So obviously it's not completely OEM like because you have kind of a gloss black here where the rest is actually matte. But we have a button here that perfectly fits in our instrument panel. I'll take this over a funky little switch or um, button or anything any day. So that's definitely an upgrade to this kit. I'm going to throw that kick plate and everything back in here at the bottom. Um, and then it's a matter of just kind of routing the wiring a little better up in the engine bay. And um, getting everything tied to the battery and ground um, landed on a screw somewhere. Stuff like that. So I'll be right back. Alright guys, and just like that as you can see, we now have some nice OEM LED style fog lights for this here Corolla. So we are definitely going to be seeing a lot better at night and it's going to look really good. I may consider doing like a yellow tint on them, I'm still debating on doing that. But for now this is what we're rolling with. So um, this was actually a pretty good kit like I, like I told you guys. Um, they are just eBay, but they are true LEDs, so that's sick, and um, everything fit how it was supposed to. The wiring I ended up routing inside the bumper support, so I actually have um, inside this bumper support, I have the wiring running down to that fog light, down to this fog light, and then it runs up through here. I actually took any extra and just coiled it up here, tucked it down in there so it's nice and hidden. I ran this wire along the top of the fuel. Uh, fuse box here and then I actually took the relay and used um, this stud that was here found a bolt that I had laying or not laying around and just used it on there luckily it was the same threads and then have that mounted there solid and then I just kind of took the extra wiring tucked it behind the battery I have the positives going to the positive I have the one negative landed there and I also have underneath here um, you can't even see it honestly oh right there um, Right down there, I have one of the negatives that was for the LED lights landed on one of the old screws for the intake that was originally here. So that works out perfect. So everything is very tucked and hidden. Um, the only mess I have right now is this little bit of stuff behind the battery. So I'm going to try to get something better going for that. But for now, I just kind of threw it together because I'm running out of time for my day here. So anyway, that's all set to go, guys. And... Uh, yeah, now it's just a matter of um, testing them out at night and everything. But as you can see, 
we have our light down here it lights up the only downside is the color of the lighting is like kind of a yellowish it's not a nice like LED white light like some of these are but it's okay you can't be perfect at least it's there so more OEM than not but yeah they don't automatically turn off or anything like that either um, so I have to always make sure to turn that button off so that's the only other downside with it but I'm still happy with it for a cheap you know option and they still fit and look right, so heck yeah. I wanna thank you guys for checking everything out. I really hope you enjoyed it. Um, like I said, it's a very good, um, cheap way of getting some fog lights on these Corollas. Still looks and everything was able to kind of tuck away pretty OEM-like still, so I'm super happy with it. And it's not really gonna like stick out necessarily to somebody later on that might see it or whatever. Um, so I'm super happy with that and uh, yeah, I actually have some fog lights now. It definitely makes the front of the car look a lot better because before you had those, you know, blanked off holes and it looked fine and everything, but you could tell something was missing. You know, you just kind of have like that effect where you see it and you're like, something's kind of off there. It's missing. It's like any kind of like blank, blanked off piece is going to have like that effect where it kind of looks like you're missing something there. You didn't get the best options, you know? So this definitely helps the front of the car look a lot better having those fog lights in there even when they're turned off you just have lights there now so it looks right it looks it looks a lot more aggressive honestly it's kind of goofy but it does that's why i might make them yellow i'm still debating because you know you see them jdm cars they got the yellow fog lights it just kind of gives it that extra flare so i'm gonna see it it would be super simple to do i would just have to open up that bottom end again and take out that whole bulb like you guys saw just wrap that with some yellow tint and then pop it back in there and it'd be seamless it would look great so we'll I'm going to consider it, we'll see, but definitely have that option. Um, but for now, I'm just going to rock them how they are, and I'm super stoked. Thanks a ton, guys, and I hope you come back for the next. Peace.